morning and welcome to live stream number 61. Today is spitting. Today, sorry about that, is Wednesday. It is September 20th, 2017. Today's live stream topic is simulation for absolutely beginners. So if you're watching this, you're watching the recording. Haven't quite got anybody in the live stream yet. As always, down in the description area of the video, you will find my email address, lars.christiansenandautodesk.com. If you have any topics you would like to see here on the live stream, well, that's your chance. Send me an email, let me know what you would like to see, and we will try to fit it in here. Anything with Fusion 360, trying to keep it, you know, 15 to 30 minutes long, kind of, you know, kind of loose. Uh, so uh, definitely take the opportunity if you are interested. Also, if you like this stuff, I really appreciate you hit the thumbs up. And if you don't, be honest, hit the thumbs down. And uh, if you haven't already, really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. See, we've already got a bunch of people jumping in here. It's absolutely awesome. So today's topic, simulation. Something I've been asked to do for a little while. Um, and uh, today we're going to do that. Now we're going to dial it back and we're going to start at the beginning. Um, and really kind of like trying to lay the foundation because I remember when I the first time was introduced to simulation within CAD software and man, I mean, I am not the brightest guy in the room and my PhD, that never happened. And I was really overwhelmed by, you know, who is Phanesis and why does he get to be stressed? So what I want to do today is I want to go in and kind of like give the fundamentals of the things inside a simulation. Because if, you, if you've never been exposed to this kind of stuff, and any of you guys who are great at this, all you simulation ninja out there, love your feedback down in the comment area of the video. Really appreciate you share the knowledge. Um, because this is kind of like a topic that it can seem overwhelming, but I don't know if it really necessarily always have to. Um, you know, it's a little bit like chess. You can, most people can play the game and then there's the guys who takes it like way and beyond. And, and it's the same thing with simulation. So let's jump into Fusion 360. Let's talk a little bit about the basics of simulation, the things that you really need to know to kind of like move on. So enough talking. I'll get back to uh, the live stream a little bit later. Let me switch screens here. Okay, so inside of Fusion, I model up something very um, basic. And really just to show certain things in here, you maybe have seen kind of like this uh, ex this type of example before because I think it's probably the most basic. But what I did was I modeled kind of like up just an, an L shape or like a V shape. They have the same length. Um, I added a inside chamfer on here because when you do simulation, you do you don't want any sharp internal corners uh, that can actually give you some some bad readings. And then I just added uh, two counterbores. Now the idea behind uh, this kind of thing is we're gonna screw this thing into like the wall, and then we are going to apply some a load to the top here, put some weight on top, and and then kind of like get an idea about uh, what what information we get out of the CAD system. And I think that kind of starts a little bit there when it comes to, to what is simulation. Um, because what all it does really, if we really cut down to the bone is, you have modeled something up in your CAD environment, simulation gives you the option to go in and see how it really would do in real life. I'll give you at least, give you some feedback that maybe, um, you know, you can use on the computer screen instead of have to either do, well, most companies does one or two things. Either you over-engineer it, just make it big, bulky, and, a, and strong enough so you never have to worry about how much weight to put on it. Or two, you actually create uh, prototypes and, and go out and test it in real life. Now, you probably still, if, if you do create prototypes today, you probably still want to do that. But instead of creating, you know, 30 different prototypes, you can maybe now cut it down to five prototypes because you have the simulation software. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, the simulation workspace and it lives right uh, in here. Now, when you go in here, you get presented with different simulation types. 
Um, and that, again, is important to understand why would I use the different ones. Now, there's a very good description in this area, and I definitely recommend that you check this out. But we're going to use today something called static stress. And static stress, I think most CAD softwares has some kind of a light version of this. But you need to know, I think this is important, that in Fusion, um, it is actually a... Um, the solver, the mathematics behind all this is actually a very high-end um, solver called Nastran that Autodesk owns that is stuffed in this. This is really actually high-end simulation within a very cheap CAD software. Now, static stress is probably the one, uh, is the best one to start out with if, you, if you're starting out. It, it's, it's the simplest one to kind of like get through. And what it is, we're applying a load to something. Um, now, of course, load can be presented in different ways. I mean, you could put a weight on this kind of shelf area or you could hit it with a baseball bat. Uh, kind of two different ways to apply the load. One is, is, is just steady, you're lifting up a weight. The other one, of course, is like more impact-based. So there's different kind of like uh, kind of studies for that. Now, the static stress is really just like you're putting the weight up uh, on it and it only really works with certain materials like steel uh, if you're getting into a uh, rubber and plastic and different things you want to maybe go more to a non-linear so static stress let that be your kind of like entry into uh, into simulation workspace uh, model frequencies um, probably all tried maybe a computer fan starts humming or something in your car starts uh, humming. So this is kind of like uh, frequencies can happen if you have something that rotates around, your fan is out of balance or something like that. Thermal. So now we can actually figure out about how things react uh, under loads of heat. Uh, what's going to happen, um, you know, um, with the materials doing the heat. And what will happen with heat and to the structural load. So both adding heat and adding some kind of a structural load, like weight or something. Um, structural buckling. So I think the best example I have is that one time I went in my daughter's room uh, and she was sitting reading a book on the bed and I decided to sit down on her little uh, uh, camping chair that was sitting next to like a little kids camping chair now it didn't break per se that's what static stress will show us it didn't snap it just buckled the legs literally just crumbled underneath me and of course everybody laughed uh, that is structural buckling so think about that like something with steel it doesn't snap in half it just buckles it bends non-linear uh, is really really powerful so now the loads can be uh, applied over a period kind of thing and you can use different uh, materials in there. Um, event simulation um, is more about um, what will happen over time. So uh, we had like this little shelf here. If we're keeping on adding um, 500 pounds on the shelf for the next 10 years, at one point will the material literally give up and 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 die so this is very good for companies to find out you know how many how many times can it go through a cycle before it uh, kind of um it kind of breaks down and the last one is shape optimization but we definitely got to play with this is where you apply some some weight uh what we like to call loads <laughs> to a structure and, and then the software will actually find the strongest but lightest uh, solution in there. So I guess wrapping this up, there's a lot of different types of simulation studies that you can, you can do out there. Uh, definitely go in here and read uh, kind of like the different, the different ones. But of course, that is important when you're trying to figure out, um, you know, what simulation study you could or should uh, run um, on your part. Because I really think, I mean, there's surely some things where you will never ever try to, to use a simulation on. But I think that if you really kind of like find a good groove with this, many people can use simulation 
to make their designs a little bit better. All right, so enough of this, enough of kind of like the, the overview. I wanna kind of give you the basis of a simulation study. So at least you can, um, you know, feel a little better about going in and trying to do one. So I'm gonna select a static stress study here. And like I said before, we're really looking to mount this thing to the wall and we're gonna apply a weight to this part. And then I think the thing that I struggled the most with in the beginning was finding out what the heck does all this mean? Like what is the data that I get back? So um, we are starting, I wish that I could say that we could just run straight across uh, over here, but it should look somewhat familiar uh, in here. You can create studies. Now by default, when we click on the study, we do get a, a study in here. And you will see some of the things are kind of like correlating. So study materials, materials, material up here. Um, there is something that says contact. There's contact up here, load case, load, uh, and so forth. So there's some similarities and a lot of it works the same way as it does inside of, of Fusion itself. Now, the first thing we're gonna look at for this part here, so this is just a single part. You can also do um, simulation on assemblies, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. I'm just gonna to touch on it. Now, over here, um, a couple of, uh, one thing you need to know about is there is actually a little pre-check clipboard over here that will give you a green check mark when you're ready to uh, run a study to get some results. But the whole idea about running these simulations, or the hardest part about running these simulation studies is setting the part up for a study. And I'm gonna say the hardest part, but it's just understanding kind of like the basics of it. The first thing we need to know is what kind of material uh, are we gonna run in here? Now when I click on this, um, it comes up here with a, uh, a steel and it says it's the same as the model because when I create the model, then um, Fusion defaults to steel, so that's what it picked here. And we're gonna just leave it here for this example. Be aware of that inside of this one uh, study, we can create multiple different studies. So we could test out different types of material. Again, static studies are not great for plastic, um, but you know you could try out different types of, of material. You can actually even create your own type of materials in here, but you can see that the NAS strand gives us all different kinds, you know, of, uh, of of things in here. So you could try stainless steel versus cast iron or something like that. So that's the first thing you want to make sure that you have the right material selected. So we're gonna leave it as steel. Um, that that kind of makes sense. Now the other thing that is really important is something called a mesh. Now the part by default is not, don't have a mesh on it. What happens is that inside the simulation software, it throws a mesh or think of it like a fishing net around the model. Depending on how fine we make that fishing net, the better our results gonna come back at us. So if we make the fishing net very rough, and you're gonna see the mesh just in a second. If we make it very rough, um, you are gonna get less uh, accurate results. If we make it very fine, um, we actually will, if the study will take too long to run. It will you just sit there, computer cranking numbers that is not necessary. So it's kind of like that, that you know, balance between time and accuracy. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna right click on this one and we can go into and create some mesh settings. Now in here, you get different options that you need to be aware of. Now, the, the one I would recommend you start out with is like a model-based size. Now the model-based size, you have like this uh, bar you can drag uh, up and down. So let me just drag it all the way up to the max and just hit OK. And I'm going to right click again and say generate mess. So now the software is going to go in and throw this fishing net around the model 
uh, and it's going to give us kind of like a look at that fishing net. Uh, so this is how it, it kind of like throws it on in here. Now, a couple of things that you need to be aware of. Uh, one thing is, so you can kind of see if you're looking at just one of these triangles, kind of like have a triangle here and you kind of have a triangle up here. Um, and like I said, again, time is money, but you need to have some accurate results. The finer that is, uh, the better, uh, the better it is. So the rule of thumb um, is that you should probably have at least um, four rectangles, three to four rectangles in here for a side. And that's because at each of these uh, endpoints of the fishing triangle fishing net is where it's calculating the, the pressure. So we can go back into our mess by right clicking on the mess and going to mess settings. And we can just drag this slider down. Let's drag it halfway and hit OK. Right click again and say generate mess. And let's see what we get. So now you will see that we are getting kind of like uh, four rectangles per side. And that is, that is definitely more accurate. Now, again, so you can go in here and let me go back into the mess settings. You can go in and you can play with the slider, the finer you make it, the longer it's gonna to take to solve. Um, and also be aware of there's all kinds of different settings in here. Uh, you can do a lot of different things. Um, you could actually also put in a size. So if you apply a size, you actually get a, a number up here. And I know that um, this here is a half an inch thick. So if I went in here, uh, and I just said that I wanted to make it, you know, smaller like that, then it will actually solve it uh, within that um, calculation. So just be aware of that the mass is important. And of course, again, like this part here, so now you can see we get four uh, rows. Um, and of course, this here is a simple part if you had like certain areas that are very complex, you want to make sure in those areas you have um, a, a, a tight, tight mess. And if you go in here to the mess settings, the model base size will actually kind of like regulate that. So if there was a very small feature, you will see that those are getting smaller. So I will go with the model based and find uh, the, the good messing setting there. Okay. So that's important that you know that you have uh, that mesh in there, that fishing net. This is, it's, so it's actually not using the model itself to calculate this on, it's using that fishing net. So that's why that is important. Next thing we're gonna talk about uh, here is before we apply our load uh, to the part here, we need to kind of like tie it down. Right now, this part is just kind of like floating around in space. We need to tell the software. We told the software, we gave it the fishing net, but now we need to kind of like tie it down uh, in space. So for that, we're using something called um, constraints for that. So in here, there is some different types of constraints. Now I'm just gonna click on the constraint icon here. And I was moving some things around. This is how to look on your screen. Um, you'll see we have some different types of, uh, of constraints. So there's a fixed. What if you if you worked inside of Fusion 360, maybe work with assemblies, you know fixed means kind of like locked into place. A pin, so here it can actually spin around an axis. Frictionless, what means that it is touching a surface, but it can maybe it can maybe move against that surface. And then there's something called pre-described displacement, what actually means I think you can like push the um, where it's locked down out in, in, in space uh, somewhere. Now I'm gonna select fixed. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna imagine that we're tying this thing. I'm just gonna turn the mess on for, off for a second, hit the light bulb. Um, I'm gonna go in here on the constraint for the fixed constraints. And I'm gonna select uh, the inside of my bolt holes. 
And then I'm going to also select the top face here um, for where we kind of like locking down this bolt. So this is where it's fixed. This is where the part's going to be hold on. So think about we having like these uh, kind of um, um, socket head cap screw. We're tying down really hard, you know, with all our might and force. Everything's hold into place. So we're adding those uh, constraints there. So now the part is kind of like tied to the wall. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a load or the weight to this. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to apply the load. Now the load also comes in normal menus also comes in different types. So there's a force. That's what we're going to use. But as you can see, there is different types of, uh, of things in there. At any point, you can go and click the little question mark and you will be taken out and get a much better kind of like description of things. But we're going to select uh, the force here and I'm just going to select on this top face. And as soon as I do that, we get a bunch of arrows kind of like indicating that this is where the force goes down. Now you should be familiar with some of these icons. We can flip it around, things like that. And uh, I'm going to apply, let's apply 800 pounds of pressure. Now for all my European friends, people from Australia, wherever you guys are all located, you can change units uh, right down here. Uh, so you can change, change that for whatever you want. So I'm going to hit uh, OK to apply this pressure. And when I've done that, if we're looking back up on this clipboard, you will see that we now have a green check mark. So that means we are ready to run the study to get some results back. So one, we, we brought in our model and we applied a mesh on it. Um, and we were kind of like playing with the rule that we need more than just two triangles. We need at least three or four um, of this fishing net around the model. So that's number one we got to do. Number two is we're going to apply constraint. How is this part actually kind of like held in place? Because if we just applied the load without constraining it, the thing will just fall around in space. So we first constrain it, then we're adding the load, now we are ready to uh, to run uh, a study. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to press uh, solve, run a study, solve it, figuring out what the heck we are up against. I'm going to click on that. And with Fusion, you get a couple of different options. You can either solve locally on your computer um, or you can use the cloud. Now, if you use the cloud, uh, that means that you can actually have multiple studies. You could have like created, so we created one here with 800 pounds uh, pressure. We're going to create one with a, another study. We're going to show you in a second. You could clone it. We put 1,000, 2,000, and we could run all those studies up in the cloud while we were still working on our computer. So that's kind of like one of the great things about the cloud. Now, um, Everybody, when you get Fusion, you do get a set of cloud credits. But when you get to a certain, uh, amo uh, and a certain amount, there's a frequently asked question thing up here. Uh, when you get to a, a certain amount, you can buy more uh, cloud credits. Um, and by the way, if your study fails, it will not charge your cloud credits. I'm just going to run this locally. So why not? It's a small study. And I'm just going to click Solve here. And then I can kind of like sit back, uh, pour myself a scotch if it's after five o'clock or me and drinking water right now. And this is just going to take, you know, two seconds to, uh, to kind of run through this here. And that's it. Now it just ran uh, the study. Now it comes back with some feedback. And this feedback you're seeing on the screen here. This is the stuff that confused me uh, a little bit when I started using simulation software. Like, okay, I can follow the other steps, set up the mass constraints, put the load on, great. And then when you get the result back, you're like, well, what does it all mean? So that's what we're gonna uh, talk about right now. It comes up with something called safety factor. And it gives us a little warning here. It says it's 1.45. And it says the design is marginal. Uh, it might be sufficient, but outside effect that it could cause a bend or a break. 
The next it says that a typical design application minimum safety factor of three is common. So what does that mean? You would actually look, if you're looking over here to the, to the left, you get this little graph and it actually shows like green is three to six, six to eight is blue, um, and one to, this is red. So what it means is that right now it's holding on to the 800 pounds we placed on top. It hasn't, what is called yield, it hasn't broken. Uh, but normally you want to have a safety factor that is like double or triple uh, in here to make sure that things will not break. And, and, and that has to do with, first of all, the calculation software inside of the, soft, inside the software, but also, of course, your steel has, uh, you know, sometimes you buy a piece of steel that has something in it. Uh, so, so that is important. So right now it tells us that uh, this material is not safe. It's not great. So we know we probably need to look at, at some, some other things in here. Now, I'm going to click this drop down, and I'm going to show you two other things in here that is important. One is called stress, and one is called displacement. So this is the three things that I want you to know about. So sa safety factor, safety factor, like I said, means that the part, if it's over one, it hasn't broken, but normally you want to make sure that it's at least two to three times stronger than the minimum. Stress, and this is is read in all different kinds of, of formats. Um, it can be called first principle, third, I don't know. This is where your PhD comes in. Von Mises stress is just a measurement. What I like to use it for is just to go in and see where is my part, where is the stress factor on this part. Um, and what you can do is you will see red means that there is an issue. Blue means it's kind of fine. And you can actually grab right down here. See my cursor, it changes. And if I drag, you will actually, it will actually show some dragging up where the stress seemed to occur on our model. And, and this is, of course, I mean, thinking about it, it's probably pretty obvious, right? I mean, that's where we, we have the screws in here, right? That's why they're clamping in to the wall, I guess. That's why there's a lot of stress. So if this thing should break, it should break uh, in here. Could be, could be a good indication. Besides the stress, displacement. Now, displacement means pretty much when we added this 800 uh, pounds on the part, how much will it really move? Now, if you're looking on the screen here, it looks pretty crazy. Um, but if you're looking at the readout, it would move nine thousandths of an inch. So this is just kind of like re, uh, over exaggerated. Now, one of the nice things is that you can actually, we can go and we can kind of like animate uh, this result. So if I click up here on the animate and I click the play button, move this one over here, you will see that it kind of like plays, it played through, uh, we are adding this 800 pounds. Now, I you can, it's pretty, like you can go two ways and I will just go up and down like that, so we can kind of like see it, this is what I normally say, the simulation is pretty colors. Uh, you can make it a little bit, you see how it's kind of like very choppy. Uh, let's go up to 40, and then it should be a little bit more smooth. You can actually also speed it up if you want to. So this kind of like shows us what, now of course, like I said, it's, it's exaggerated. It's only moving 9,000, so this is way exaggerated. But here's an interesting thing I'm just noticing here. I'm gonna go over to the front view, and that is if I'm looking while this is playing, well, there's actually kind of like an issue here because you see how the part is kind of like pushing behind. I mean, there's kind of like a wall there, right? And the whole thing is kind of like being pushed down. Well, that's my fault um, because when I apply those constraints that holding down the part, I only specified that the screw holes where it was locked down. So this is extremely important to, to realize when it comes to simulation studies that if you're getting weird results or, or 
wrong results. Many times it's the setup that could be an issue. We never define that wall. So we're actually saying it's just screwed in and we're just letting it kind of like bend behind that. So let's fix that. Now, I'm going to go out and hit OK here. And uh, we can actually just go um, in here. If we go into our load case, you will see our constraint is sitting in here. And uh, we can just add another constraint to it. So what I'm going to use for this backside is I'm going to use the frictionless. less. So it's pretty much, it's not locked in. It can actually move almost like if the, it was sitting on roller bearings or against a flat surface like the wall. So I'm going to add that on top of that and hit OK. And as soon as I do that, we get flags because this is like uh, when we're inside of cam. It's telling us that, hey, you know, uh, you change something. And now we can just go in and resolve it uh, again with kind of like that, um, that new condition in there. So be aware of that when you're setting up your studies, you got to specify everything of kind of like where it's moving and, 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 and you know, take a good look at it. So uh, when you go and look at the results, use the animation. It's not just for, you know, a pretty picture. Now, something interesting happens here, though, and that is that now our safety factor actually bumped up uh, to six because it now have that sturdiness of the wall, right? So, and I'm going to run a little more than a half an hour today. So by setting up the right conditions, suddenly our part is actually not failing. Uh, what is good news is reading six. We can go down here um, and we can say that we want to look at the safety factor in the plot here. You will now see that it goes to six, what is perfect, right? It's not really over designed, um, but it's good. Now, if we go back and look at the stress again, um, we again can go in and we can scroll here. And now we can see that the stress have kind of changed a little bit, actually. Now, suddenly, because we have a wall behind there, it's not on the screws. It's actually on this radius or, and up on this area. So we have kind of like applying that pressure up there. What I guess actually makes sense now while we're thinking about it. And if we go back down and look at the displacement, we will see that because, again, we have the supporting wall now, we're actually only moving uh, two thousands uh, of an inch. And again, if I go up and play it, it will still... Uh, look uh, kind of dramatic, uh, but we will see that when we go and look at the front of the side here, everything is now completely, uh, completely stable. So that's all good, and we kind of like got a good result, and you know, open the bottle of champagne or beer or whatever you're into. But one of the great things about being inside of simulation, and what I want to kind of like want you to think about is that we can kind of redefine this and be like, well, what else? What could actually be, be considered? So one of the things I did in this part was I added that load on top uh, on the part here. Um, but what if that load, I applied that load to the entire face. What if that load is actually not on that entire face? What if it's shifted down a little bit? So what we can do here is we can go and we can right click and we can actually clone this study. So we already have this result. We're kind of happy with this. Um, we can go to the boss and say that, you know, if you're applying this load on the entire surface, everything looks good. So let's clone the study. What gives us a study number two. And let's go in and change uh, this load here, uh, this this load that we that we created. So I'm just going to, Go into this load. And uh, actually, I gotta go into the folder. There we go. Here it is. Let's go in and edit this load here. So you can see how it is on the entire surface. Well, one thing we can actually do, we can, we can apply different constraints to this. So if I click on this angle delta, I actually get this triad. I could actually say that the load would come maybe at an angle in there. And what I also can do, if I click on this little target, I can actually control that 800 pounds 
how it's going to come down on the surface. And it does it uh, with a radius. So right now, the 800 pounds would come down all on that surface. So now any guy know the whole thing about a lady with high heels stepping on your toes, right? Uh, versus uh, a big flat sandal. Um, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And then I'm actually going to grab it here and I'm going to move the load out. What if the load was pushed right out here instead? What will happen then? Let's hit OK. And uh, with that out there, let's uh, resolve uh, our study here and see what we get out of that. So I hope uh, that this kind of makes sense, uh, how you can utilize the simulation to kind of see uh, these uh, different things. So again, um, repetition is key in all learning. You got to set up that mesh. You got to set up the right constraints. And like you saw how I was missing the back wall. Uh, so that's important. Then you got to apply the right load. And now you just saw how we can actually move it around. Um, and then you get to, uh, to run uh, the study. So now moving this out, we suddenly get a flag that our safety factor is actually been compromised. We are under the three um, and we have a warning about that because the load was, was shifted out. If we go and look at the stress, we probably will see or think that the stress is going to be somewhat the same, right? Roll up here. Um, if we go and look at the displacement of it, um, it have moved it to about 5,000 here. And again, um, use these animation tools to get a really, really good idea. And it shows kind of like here uh, where the load is. Okay, so just to make sure when it comes to reading the different scenarios, safety factor between two and three uh, is where you want to be. The yield, the steel will break at one, so you want to double it up. I don't care who Fenmises is, but when it comes to stress, it's showing you uh, where in the part you maybe could could do something, right? Like looking here, it makes sense at that the radius is where where this is breaking. And I I wish I could have done this a little bit faster, but I actually did design uh, a model, and I'm gonna finish this up. I'm gonna wrap this up now. But what happens if we adding that? cross beam in there right like we all know that kind of design so now we can actually go and find out if you know what what we want to do uh with the design in here and then the last one the displacement really just shows you how much the part is going uh to move but like i said this the animation can really give you um a good indication of that the last thing I want to end this up with is that if you do go out to your data panel and you go out to your main library here, if you scroll down, you will see that there is simulation samples. You can go in here and in here there is some hands-on exercises, uh, some accuracy verification, there's all different kinds uh, of things in here. Uh, that you can you can play around. If you check out the website that I showed yesterday with the learning content, there is actually a six minute video showing how to set uh, this connection uh, rod up. And I actually think that we maybe next week are uh, gonna attack that model or something similar to this model so we can talk about assemblies uh, because you we just did a single part today, but of course you can do assemblies. I hope that this was a good introduction into uh, to simulation. You let me know, thumbs up or thumbs down. I really just hope to kind of like, if you've never touched this before, at least feeling like, you know, you're kind of understanding uh, the basics of this. Um, and if anything, simplify is important. So if you right now have an assembly file where you want to do some, um, some simulation on it, break it down into the single components that you are going to do a, a, a simulation on. Also, remove anything that doesn't need to be there. So if there's like some pockets or some different things that have nothing to do with what you're testing, um, don't need it. It's going to take longer to solve. What I mean by that 
is that if we go in and we, we look at our simulation model here, maybe if that, well, I don't know, maybe if there had been a pocket down here, uh, it maybe would have not affected anything. We could just have left, uh, left that out. All right, guys, 87 people in the live stream. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to, uh, to join in uh, and watch this. I hope it was useful. You let me know down in the description area. There is my email address. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, it should be up there in about 15 minutes or so. Shoot me an email. Let me know what you think. Any new future topics, I'd love to hear about it. Tomorrow, this is important. Tomorrow, we're going to model. How about getting into Fusion and just model something up? Um, I think we're going to model up a computer fan. And I think we're going to do it, um, you know, as a beginner. Let's not make it too complicated. Let's just see how we can model something up without using way too many fancy uh, commands and, and overwhelm people. Friday is CAM. Remember that. So tomorrow, model up a, uh, a computer fan, uh, or at least the, the fan blades themselves. Um, I'm going to do what I normally do. I'm going to end the broadcast. If you're watching the recording, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for taking the time. If you're watching the live stream, I'll see you just in a second in, uh, in the chat. Have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much, guys.